Let's go ahead and call our meeting to order and certainly want to thank each one for coming tonight. Uh, appreciate you being here. We're going to go ahead and have our Pledge of Allegiance. I'll practice the allegiance in that and then the Fire Arms Trust will give her invocation. Father, thank you for such a wonderful day of life. You bless us with it. a day of life. How precious it is. I want to ask you to be with our, leader, our city leaders, as to your guidance, your wisdom, and ask for forgiveness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. First thing we have tonight is the public hearing to hear comments on the ordinance to amend the uh, original property for uh, Arthur Williams. This property is um, uh, west of town in Weston, where he currently has uh, some storage buildings there. But what he wants to do is build uh, some storage buildings that you can rent. It has roll-up doors. And, uh, so in order to do that, it was currently FAR, which uh, would not allow him to be able to build those things. So it has to be M1 light industrial. No, nobody's gonna live in them, right? No, it's storage. It's just storage. You go rent. It's oh, like okay. rent five or ten. Well, I know there's room. there's some that's right. rented. Right. People's right. living in them. Which he's, he's already got uh, a storage building you can buy take to your house. You know, right there. All he's gonna do. Is he's got it. some up on 29 too. That's rented out right behind the Pleasant Ridge Church. Yep. Yeah, this is not that. We're talking about one particular piece of property. I just, you know, I got no problem. I think if you own the land, you do what you want. Well, it has to be zoned for it, so that's what the problem, that's what we'd be doing. Any other questions or comments? Okay. First item on the uh, agenda is a recommendation to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Is there a recommendation to approve those minutes? Say aye. Thank you. Uh, Scotty Sanderson, if you would place her, we've got you on here first. If you want to give us a report from the rec center board, we'll let you do that at this time. Thank you, all um, Haven't been here in a while. It's been a while since we've had a meeting, but main reason for that, basketball, we don't really have any issues during basketball season. Uh, we use the elementary school gym, the high school gym. Uh, rec center gym, usually half courts. We can get a lot of teams on those courts and usually just don't have a lot of issues during basketball. And in the fall with football, because we don't have football, that's through another organization. Of course, now baseball and softball starting up, and that's when it really starts ratcheting up for us and the rec board and Larry. And the weather starts getting warmer. But we met last week. Um, Larry, Scott Thomas here, if I say something wrong, correct me, please. But we talked about the possibility of adding four-year-olds to T-ball, and Dixie Youth is going to have a developmental league this year, so that would give us a few extra kids that we could uh, have in T-ball, and also softball is going to have some younger girls this year. So Larry's allowing, I think, four-year-olds to sign up. Am I correct? On correct. That? Um, the other thing that we talked about was an archery park. The rec board wasn't really excited about that, but. One of the reasons for that is we just don't know a whole lot about it. And we have asked that maybe someone, you know, enter, would entertain the idea of someone come and talk to us and talk, maybe talk about the liability of having an archery park. Like I said, no one on the rec board really knows anything about that. But, you know, if we could have somebody come and talk to us, we would, you know, have a meeting, sit down, talk to them, ask them some questions, and we can come back and relay the information to y'all. If you had some need, Christian. We had, you know, had some stuff there. I think there's grants for that sort of thing also, yeah. and you know, it's something else for us to do. I mean, exactly. Really, before we started 
um, this guy. There wasn't a whole lot of interest in that, and you can see how that's taken taken off. So we don't know. But we just we don't know nothing about it. And I, I think, think it'd be possible to just like you say, need more information. Yeah, so sure you're doing reviewing some big doctors. And like I said, we had questions about liability also. You can probably get with the full range because I'm pretty sure that that's one of their recreations. So you probably that's someone that could yeah. use it also. But like I said, we just didn't know anything about it to intelligently speak on it. Uh, we also talked about the main one of the main reasons we met was one about the uh, website, some rules and regulations, uh, what goes on at the rec. Hopefully by the next meeting I will be here, I'll just I'll get it to uh, Jen and maybe have y'all some rules and regulations that y'all can go over and look at. And if you have any questions, you can contact us on that. We talked about what to put on, you know, for the website, what activities we had. You know, we have a lot of activities that aren't specifically through the rec, but we discussed we would all, you know, like, Dixie Youth Baseball, uh, Little League Softball, uh, maybe Toy Bow Football. We would put that on there because people were from out of town looking, that's where they would go to look. And maybe add their links to it where they could contact that organization directly. Um, and other you, Scott, you know, John's currently working on our right. updating our website. So if y'all will meet with John someday and give him ideas of something that might be beneficial. While he's working on John, you'd be okay with him. John said he'd come by and set up a set up a family with us. He can meet or with me. With you on next door, maybe, and yeah. kind of get some ideas. Well, we have someone working on that right now to give you a, a rough draft of some rules and regulations that we'll that we get to each one of y'all. Uh, the other thing is, one of the main concerns we have right now is the old softball field. Uh, it's got a new fence, you know, brand new fence on it, but it's the lighting on that field. And as of right now, this is Dixie Youth Baseball. We have over 150 boys signed up for baseball. And with the girls softball, we have, they have over 100 girls. So you're looking at somewhere between probably 250 and 300 kids that are playing baseball and softball trying to use five fields. You can't use, like in basketball, you can't use half of a field for that. And so that's a lot of teams, a lot of kids to get on five. Anytime we can, and we have them. It's not like we don't have to build it. We just need lights on it. And I think Larry is working on some um, lighting proposals for y'all also. But that's a, with it come getting here quickly, that's one of the things we really need for extra practice, and then we can they can play games on it. Scott can answer that. Yeah. I mean, that field, once you get lots, I mean, it's got the new field. We can, they can play games if we need to host a tournament and put people up there to play on it. Girls and boys don't play on the same field. They, yeah, on that field, you I have to use bases. You can, like with the baseball field down there, they can move the base, but they have, a, what do you call it there, stuff that go down. You can move them. You, can bases, move them. you just pick up, move them one spot to the I plug, take the plug up. So it wouldn't necessarily be just one group using it, be multiple groups. We well, need it for, for all of them, <clears throat> especially practice. The number he gave you not going to include the table. Yeah, that doesn't include. So now you're talking about that's 250, like I said, that's well over 350. 325, 350. And we have the field, we're just, it's just a lighting issue. Defense is that would be the next step to take the lighting, mm -hmm. I believe. But um, that's basically what we met about. And like I said, Larry is going to get you. He's, I think he's got one lighting proposal and weighing on the I think we got another one. I've got the second one late okay. this afternoon. If, if the council will give us we can do that tonight. Not for the next one. But I've got it late this afternoon. I have two proposals for lights. And uh, so, you know, maybe we get it done tonight sooner the better. At least get it, because it may take several weeks before they can yeah. get it installed. And then that would be. After time changes and when you start using the field later in the evening, finally right. when y'all's game starts. When do they officially start? Probably quicker than we can get it done. April, uh, we'll start about the first week in April, and I mean it'll be April, May, and you know probably can use it in June. And I know softball's got some; they've got a big tournament in June playing that that field maybe could be used for games. Uh, so it could be used right away just to use lots. Like I said, it's a problem, but it's a good problem to have because there's a lot of kids. And same way with basketball, we had a lot of kids playing basketball. Any questions? 
Thank y'all. Appreciate it. Thank y'all. Any questions, feel free to give me a call. Thank you, Scott. <coughs> Next item on agenda for recommendation for amendment of consideration of ordinance number 2015-4. This will be amending the city of Hamilton zoning ordinance to rezone property located on Bexar Avenue from FAR Forestry Agricultural to Residential to uh, M1 Light Industrial. This will be the property we talked about and uh, Walker Williams zones and indeed running the paper uh, 14th, uh, January 14th and 21st. And did run correctly. We double check that. So, would there be a recommendation for the meeting consideration? Five of the recommendation to purchase six by ten utility trader from water department. Approximate cost is one thousand dollars. Rodney, um, I sent the I think I sent the council last week a proposal that you got a price from uh, motorsports. And this would be to haul equipment on. It's easier to get on the trailer and take it from job site to job site instead of taking it in night back of your truck, which is pretty heavy. Right. Concrete saw and what else would you have on there? Got a big what behind concrete saw we have to use to cut asphalt with. It's probably 400 pounds or better. And we can just roll it right up on the trailer. And then also we got a mud pump, that kind of stuff we have to use on the job site. And we also would like to use it for hauling lawnmower, guiding lawnmower to our, uh, water tanks and booster pump stations and so on the time. We have not, we've had to borrow one every time we haul a line more or something. They really need this to make it a lot easier, a lot more efficient. So would there be a recommendation yes. for this purpose? Just approving the uh, what it's for, the following events that the chamber does, and we certainly appreciate the chamber and the, their support of the city. But it's a promotion of Jerry Brown, leader of cast, uh, customer appreciation day, shrimp bowl, Miss Hamilton pageant, and related pageants, but it had to River Fall Fest and Christmas parade down on the square, and plus they do many other things besides what's on here. Have to promote. It's like they had the last event last week. So, uh, is there a motion to approve this contract? Sullen's house. Emily is here, but Mr. Moore, I asked him to come tonight if he would place her and tell us about what this is for and then any other update projects that you have. Because I know the Hampton Sullen's house has got several things going, and we're going to do one project after the next, try to get that house finished. So if you would, Mr. Moore, just tell us what this proposal is for. <clears throat> Most of you know that the uh, Marion County Historical Society took on the Hamilton House as a project about two years ago. And since then, we have done a lot to the house. We've uh, almost totally completed the outside. Uh, the inside's probably 80% complete. Uh, the only thing lacking inside is the kitchen 
basically. <clears throat> but we feel like we're losing an opportunity here by not going ahead and completing it. We have spent about $50,000 on, on the Hamilton House through, uh, we've gotten money through donations, grants, uh, projects, and so on and so forth just to raise money, but it's kind of moving slowly. And like I say, we feel like we're losing an opportunity for tourism, uh, events we can have there like weddings, showers, uh, receptions, and so on. Anyway, we want, we want to push, push this thing uh, faster, get in high gear so we can start having those events. The main things that are hold, hold, holding us back are restrooms uh, <clears throat> and the heating and air conditioning. Uh, we have uh, gotten two bids on our architectural work for the restrooms. We felt like we needed an architect to do that because it has to adhere to the ADA, to the Americans with Disability Act. Uh, some special materials need to be used because of fluctuations in temperature for an outside uh, restroom that's not going to be heated and cooled all the time. And we want it to look, look like it's supposed to be there, too. So we got two bids for architects and uh, Emily uh, Miller Peterson came in the lowest. She is estimating that it will be, well, her rate is $75 an hour, which is half what she normally charges. Uh, and she's estimating 20 hours, which is only $1,500. I have to bid, she wrote it to not exceed 3000 but I had a talk with her, and she said, I don't think it's going to do that. I just want to recover myself in case some contingency came up. So anyway, that 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 we would we would like to have to go ahead and be able to have uh, good plans and specifications to let the let to get bids and let a contract on the restroom restrooms. The other big project is well, let me say this first: we have completed the electrical and plumbing, and the next project to get the house ready to really be able to do things in is the heating and air conditioning. We got two bids. One of them was over twenty-one thousand, and the other one was fourteen thousand five hundred. Um, we, uh, thanks to Jan, she applied for us uh, on our behalf to the Alabama Historical Commission, and received, we received a ten thousand dollar grant specifically to be used for the heating and air conditioning. So we uh, we are short forty-five hundred dollars on the heating and air conditioning. We have already uh, uh, talked to the the uh, one that the, one, the uh, heating and air conditioning man that, uh, that, that gave us a fourteen thousand dollar bid, and he's ready to go. What's his name? Um, good question. What is it? Clark? Is it the Fincher? Or it's Fen yeah, it's uh, Clark Fincher. Yeah, from Hackle. Yeah. I had trouble getting bids on the heating and air. People say they want to bid on it, but we never hear from them again. So, but we did. We were uh, we were able to get two. This was the best we could. Was his bid fourteen thousand five hundred? Fourteen five hundred total. When we get through this with the council, we can go ahead and award this bid if you want to. If yes. They, if they will. Yes. That way he could be. Mitch. Yes. Spring coming up. They finished to build a problem. We're. Uh, very interested, I know I am for sure, and, and I think the others are too, of getting this completed, like you said, and the way we can have teas, reception, waiting, whatever. Mm -hmm. We are missing out on a lot. And, yeah. and the ownership is to the citizens of the city. And uh, we need to just pack our ears, get in here, and get it done. So the city going. owns the house, so we're either yeah, so, fix it or we don't, so we might as well. And you got to just keep going a little at a time until we get done. Because you were charged for these events, were yes. you not? Yes. Absolutely. So uh, I, I think that you'll have a long list. Mm -hmm. I think you will respect well, We already well. have people taking pictures on the front porch mm -hmm. for, for uh, wedding pictures and, right. and uh, uh -huh. engagement pictures and so on. Oh, yeah. I think it's just going to take yeah. off. So that's, uh, that's basically it. Okay. All right, thank you. Any thank questions? You. What would it cost to have a wedding in this house? What would it cost, like anyone that wanted to get married in the house? What, what does what does the city make off of it? 
we, we haven't established those rates yet. It's been about 60 something thousand. 50,000 spent already. All right. Actually, yeah, actually 60,000 with the with the uh, plum updates. Mm -hmm. Any more? That's it. Okay. I'd like to add one thing, uh, if I may. I uh, saw the other day that there's going to be some grants available in the future mm -hmm. because in 2019, the state of Alabama is going to celebrate its 200th anniversary. And there is uh, a historical significance tied to that house because Judge Terrell Sr. is one from Hamilton that's buried in the Indian Mounds is one of the original signers of the first state of Alabama Constitution. And so I think that's what helped us get the grant. Um, but you know if we get far enough along and, and I, this email came across my radar the other day that there's going to be some grant monies available to some cities. It might, I mean, it's just a possibility might be able to get well, some more. Well, once you get it completed, will you have to furnish it? <coughs> See, yes, ma'am. Will, will there be any of those, you suppose, that would that would apply to furnishings? I don't know. I just, um, this is just in the beginning. Just, I they just appointed the uh, governor's just appointed a committee and the chairperson is just getting off the ground. But they did say there was going to be some grants available. Maybe. Well, that'd be great. Yeah. We've had several people in the communities tell us already that they would like to donate some furniture for the, that they have yeah. some for that period. So yeah. we feel yeah. pretty good about getting that for either little or no cost at all. Well, that's good. Yep. Thank y'all for your hard work and determination to get the house finished. Cause that's what it's going to take to get it completed. It's a, good group. So mm -hmm. it's working. it's a beautiful house and it's a historic house, so we need to just keep going until we get it done. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, would there be a recommendation to, uh, to approve uh, their recommendation for Henry Peterson's architect proposal? For $3,000 for the Hampton Sevens house. Not to exceed that, it could be less. For the outside bathrooms. Okay. <coughs> Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. Would it be okay to do the heating cooling while we're going? So for Clark's feature, $14,500 for the heating cooling? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, that $10,000 grant will be applied, so we're, we're only needing 4500 That's great. Thank you for reminding me that. Yes, 10000 would apply toward that. So our balance would be $14,500. I'll say that. I mean, 4000 <coughs> Okay. Mm -hmm. Lynn made the motion in France. Mm -hmm. okay. All in favor, say aye. One thing, Jim, we need to add too is this does come out of the capital improvement fund on both items. Okay. We need to make that for the minutes that for both. That's what the money would come from. Okay. Number eight is a recommendation to for a street farm garbage collector. We had uh, probably about 35 applications interviewed, uh, five the other night. And the recommendation is for Josh Irving to be hired, Irving to be hired, uh, starting rate of thirteen forty per hour. Uh, start date would be this Friday, two twenty fifteen. Is there a motion to hire Josh? Let me say that. Um, <laughs> Did you vote? Yes. Okay. I gave everybody the opportunity to come for the uh, 
interviews, and nobody came but me and uh, Mike. So that's what we went with, and the recommendations based on that. And it's not easy. Uh, everybody that was interviewed is an outstanding individual. Everyone would make a great worker, but you got to pick one, and that's who we pick. Well, it's not up to the council to do that. No. It's up to the Mike. It's up to so, us to make a recommendation. I don't know what your problem is, Tanner, but that's uh, absolutely problem. <clears throat> Next thing uh, we have, I don't have on the agenda, but Scotty talked about it, and I know Scott Tyler's here to talk about it or mention it. The lights at the ball field, I got two estimates. One was I had, and one I just got late this afternoon. If we could, I wouldn't mind going ahead and getting this approved to come out of the um, budget acquisition money and basically the reason is for the time to get these uh, I think if we keep waiting you know, two or three more weeks and then approve it and then it's several more weeks before they get it installed we're going to have extra time but that's the reason if we could do it tonight would be fine one is from Musco MUSCO 72,000, or it's a range from 72,000 to 79,600 dollars. The other bid is from S&G Electric and is for 90,650. Larry, can you explain, uh, if you would, give us the background on that ball field? I think we've already heard from Scotty. Um, it's basically what Scotty said. It's the old softball field. That, uh, the upper field. At one time, we were planning on using the, uh, the existing poles on it, but they. In, in the meantime, in the last four or five years, they brought it and got the woodpecker holes. And they're not using. Okay, so, uh, this is proposal. This for is new poles. New, everything. New, new everything. Lights, everything. Yeah, and that's the way it's going to have to be. If we put lights on, that's what's going to have to be. Uh, the, the lighting would be 50 candle, 50 foot candle light on the infield and 30 on the outfield. This would take care of any kind of uh, competition sports we'd have: girls softball, dicks youth baseball, table or horse. Uh, the field is laid out at 225 all the way around. That would take it. That would be adequate for everything that we need to use for. It's a what's called dirt infield, and uh, Dixie youth can play on dirt infield. Uh, Dixie girls can't. They, I mean, uh, Dixie girls has to. So Dixie youth should go solid or dirt. Now, it'll be a dirt infield. It'll be multi-purpose, and then we can play a t-ball. T-ball is something. It doesn't matter. You know. Person that can mark be fine is just put the labor, you know, trying to get it approved. May I say something? It's, it's going to be six weeks out right now if we start. If we left the thing tonight, and it's going to be six weeks. And that's in case we get okay weather. <coughs> That'll put us in the middle of April. Yeah. That, this is okay weather. We, we, we depend on the weather. And that's, that's the only issue is the time. Scott, you know. what did you say? I can't put that. Uh, just starting about, the game's about April 1st. Yes, ma'am, that's right. Somewhere in that neighborhood, you better motion. He played three mm -hmm. They're going to start practicing quicker than that. That's what they really need that for is practice. This time of the year, it gets dark earlier than it does in, say, June. Mm -hmm. we've, got, we've got 13 teams, and you're trying to practice on three fields. We'll have partial use of the Charles Trail field for a little bit. It's just it's going to be hard to get these just for Dixie youth just to be able to get on. I know softball is going to run into the same issue too and try to, you know, let's try to share that field up there and work out whatever's the best schedule-wise. So, you take the one bid? I'm going to Now, Tuscaloosa. Tuscaloosa, I'm sorry. The guy actually, the sales rep was out of uh, Russellville. Right. But, the, but the Musco was out of Tuscaloosa. Are you telling me on your condition that they start right away? I'll call Jenny tomorrow if you let me. Call him right now if you need me. <laughs> 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 
our house that we purchased uh, several months ago. Uh, we plan on burning it and tearing it down, removing it from the property so we can move forward with other plans for parking lot or hot lot, whatever we want to do. And <clears throat> at one time, I think Tim had mentioned the state might want it for the uh, disassemble for the uh, prison system. Uh, pick up the a and I, did you write them in? Anyway, that went on for a couple of months and decided that they weren't going to use it. So now, uh, what we need to do, Scott, you can explain it, but I've had several to ask, you know, what if they, some doors or something they wanted, or a window, or cabinets, and employees have asked, and then other people in, in the public has asked. So they couldn't offer it to the employees to come get a door or come get a window without offering to the public. So what we need to do is have just one specific easy plan that Scott sent me this afternoon by email, but it didn't come through. And uh, Scott, would you explain that so we can kind of move this forward, get this process started? Sure. Would you be your suggestion? We need to declare the personal items in that house under the municipal purposes anymore, which I think, yeah, I think we did that when we decided to. Yeah, but what we talked about was setting a date like next Friday, February 27th, uh, basically to have an open house. And then I believe the address is 510 10th Avenue Southwest. Have an open house for anyone to come and, and look at the house, look at the personal items between eight and four, and then to have sealed bids to uh, the mayor and Jane Williams, the city clerk, at 4 p.m. Um, 
for the mayor to open the bids and on the bids to clearly state which items you want and what you bid for them. And then uh, Mary and Jan, y'all would basically pick the highest, highest bidder on each of the property and uh, the p people would need to have the money available right thing that day. that day so that we can get it taken care of. If something is not bid upon, then give you authority to dispose of the property immediately uh, if, heaven forbid, there'd be a tie, but in case there is a tie, basically to have a, an auction right there on the spot between the tying parties. But um, I think that's the best way to basically get knock it out in one day and have someone come, give people maybe a week or so to get everything out of the house, and um, um, so that then we can proceed with demolishing the house. Larry, I'll meet you up on that day to let people come look. Um, I will sign somebody to be there. Yes. I mean, there, there's a few people that might, might not want nothing, but somebody might want the kitchen cabinet, or somebody might want a couple of doors or a couple of windows. Could they be responsible for tearing all that out? Mm -hmm. They would be responsible for removing. I, I have a question. I guess it's for I've had someone just ask me this afternoon at Walmart about it, and I told them to check the paper. Have we got time to get it in the paper? Did you say it was 27 of February? Yes. We can put it in here. Yeah. Surely probably, we can. Probably. One time. Yeah, I mean, we can. Surely we can get it in there by next week. Oh, we can get it in. We can get it in Saturday. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. I promised this person it'd be in the paper. I'll jump up and down on Les Walter so we got to get it in. Okay. <laughs> Scott, there's going to be a promotion to that or agreement or what we need to do. Yes, sir. I think y'all need to do that as a resolution. So. Do that on February 27th. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that Senator Taylor, that property will be located on that? Is there a second? Is there any other discussion? All in favor say aye.